Welcome to the third of a series of four videos with subject matter about what you don't know about thermally modified wood. My name is Robert Lennon. I'm one of the owners of Thermalwood Canada. And uh, we just want to go through this with you so you have a better understanding of, of what thermally modified wood is. The first two sessions that we did, we focused on the theory of thermally modified wood, what was behind the process. We talked about the key characteristics about the stability that was there, especially when it comes to being in hot, humid uh, areas where in normal cases, humidity would get into the wood and there would be all kinds of swelling and contraction. In this particular case, the, with thermally modified wood, it is substantially reduced. We talked about the fact that the uh, bending strength was reduced by about 10%. So then that made it not uh, recommended for structural applications, but you can use it for everything else. And if you still want to use it for structural applications, then you got to beef it up a little bit. Resistance to decay because we've removed all the organic properties inside the wood, the ones that were causing it to, uh, to, to rot. In addition to uh, being food for fungus, that uh, those organic properties are gone. So therefore, uh, fungus has a hard time to grow. And insects, um, different for termites. The uh, termites, we need to coat it with our Q-Tech product that will prevent it from being uh, uh, eaten up or destroyed by the termites but any other bugs aren't interested in the wood. It's environmentally friendly because we only use heat and steam inside our process. We do not use any chemicals to be able to uh, preserve the wood. And again, then the appearance. The higher you go in temperature, the darker it is, but the higher you go, the more resistance that you have. So it's a choice that's gotta be made. But if it comes to putting uh, this product outside, we don't rec recommend a lighter color It'll lighten up by itself with the, uh, with the UV uh, light, and uh, we'll explain that a little bit as we go. So the opportunities are all over, uh, and especially when it comes to your clients or people that are looking for a green product. As I said, heat and steam are the only things that we use. High humidity areas, again, very important. You can use this in showers. We've used this in hot yoga rooms with very high humid humidity in those. Uh, they come from well managed forests. We take all our products from North American sawmills that are in the province of uh, Quebec, Ontario. We get New Brunswick, we go to Nova Scotia, so all the eastern uh, side. And then we go into the US from Indiana, Pennsylvania, New York. Uh, we'll go to those states to be able to get some of the products that we, uh, we want. And using these uh, species of hardwoods in non traditional areas. So Today, our focus is going to be on, on siding and using, this is a picture of a deck, but it still can be applied on the, on the siding product. And I'll show you some profiles in a minute, but uh, we're using, uh, and we're going to talk about today, we'll be talking about wooden siding. So here's some examples of uh, the siding using the hidden fastener system on the uh, uh, top side here. This is a maple siding that they've combined with uh, metal framework and uh, um, some uh, metal siding here. And in this particular case, there was a coating on the, on the wood. Uh, this was done a number of years ago. The client uh, left it in this uh, way for a while. And then they went back uh, about four or five years afterwards and uh, they painted the, uh, a dark, dark gray. So coatings go well on it. The, uh, this part here, uh, this is a school. It was built down in Nova Scotia, and the siding is out of pine. And then on this side, it's, uh, it's birch that they didn't put anything on it and let it go gray. So, again, repeating that if you want to keep the nice brown, rich color, you need to put UV protection. If you don't put anything on it, it will turn gray, but then that is your choice. It depends the look that you really want to have. Uh, We've also started coating some of our siding. As you can see here, uh, this one here is a little bit more rustic because we used a uh, wormy butternut. And then around the windows, it's uh, larch. Uh, in both of these cases, the wood was brushed to allow this coating to really stick on the wood. Again, after thermal modification, the wood becomes very, very dense, very, very hard, and uh, becomes a lot more difficult to uh, um, uh, to have coatings on it. Oils really penetrate uh, quite well in uh, the process and uh, 
so that's why we use Qtech because it soaks right into the wood. And as you can see here, this is the same building, but uh, more finished where uh, the, uh, the gray uh, coating is all the way through. Now, some of the reasons on, uh, on and behind here on this process is the fact that with a gray, if uh, this paint wears off and now this has been on this building now for about two and a half, three years, and uh, there's been no deterioration whatsoever. Uh, the whole concept behind it and putting the gray down is that if it does decide to start wearing the paint off in certain areas, that the wood will be exposed and then it'll turn gray in behind. But that hasn't even happened yet and it's been, like I said, three years and uh, the wood is performing very, very well going through. Uh, this again, going back to the building that was in Birch uh, and looking at the, the siding, the wood looks great. It's allowed to go gray and it's not really a gray in this particular case. It's more of a, uh, of a light uh, brown with some gray spots, but it'll continue on graying up as, a, as it goes through. But because it's on the vertical, uh, the sun doesn't hit it as hard as a deck. So it'd take a bit longer to be able to get into that, uh, that gray patina that we're looking at. Uh, this building, they had put uh, um, a coating on it. And uh, again, uh, to protect it from uh, UV, uh, UV light. But it, uh, like I said, it soaks up very well. This, uh, this building, they allowed it to, uh, to go gray. They didn't want to have the coating on it. So as you can see, it's starting to go gray through the, uh, uh, through the sides. It's starting to, uh, to lighten up. And on the deck here, it's gone completely gray because the vertical or the, the horizontal decking seems to, uh, uh, to go gray a lot quicker. This building, uh, in this particular case, this is right on the ocean. So talking about the fact of uh, very high humid areas and, and rugged areas, this uh, will be in an area that uh, uh, there's about 100 kilometers of, uh, of water in front of it. Uh, ocean water, the, uh, the salt water hits that uh, on a regular basis and uh, the winds are very high. Uh, we go from temperatures of 30 degrees in the summertime to minus 30, minus 40 degrees in the wintertime. And uh, this uh, particular siding project has been up there now for um, about nine years and it's performing extremely, extremely well. In this particular case, because they wanted to have this all great evenly, even underneath the, uh, the soffits and the, and the posts and stuff, is that this was all grayed up horizontally before it went up on the building. So as to be able to keep that consistency all the way through was the only way that that could uh, happen because anything underneath the soffits wouldn't get any sun and wouldn't go gray. It might lighten up a little bit, but never go into a gray mode. Uh, here's some of the profiles. We have a double rabbit profile uh, where if you, you have the option of putting this uh, horizontal or vertical, it would give you some small uh, little narrow sections in there. Then uh, we have uh, a single rabbit. We can have it beveled here or we could have it straight down on that, uh, that corner, but it gives it a nice smooth uh, finish like most of the pictures that you've seen. And then uh, we've done some in the past where we've put it at a bit of a, of a bevel here. Um, we're concerned with this one a little bit. We'd have to go to a uh, five quarter board because we don't leave very much uh, meat on the back end here and uh, it could be problematic down the future. We haven't had any situations, but we've considered that uh, this one here, we'd have to do a little bit uh, uh, thicker to be able to go through. Now, I have a, an installation video that I'm gonna play for you. Welcome to the addition of the installation video for the Snap To It uh, siding product from Thermowood Canada. So what we're gonna to do today is uh, show you how to install these clips in the first place. And just so that you know is that there's a male and female component so you can actually snap them together so it keeps that spacing all the time when you're installing them. So we've already got part of the siding already started on this house. And what we're doing is that uh, the key to this is make sure that you're level when you first start off. And then after that, everything should fit into place. But you still need a level to be able to make sure that you're, uh, uh, you're moving forward. So we're just going to install this one here to show you the do's and don'ts of it. Now, there's already a clip in here, as you can see. And I'm going to use the male clip and get it into that section right there. The first thing I'm going to do is install one screw 
just to make sure that we're in place and we're not uh, out of place. And this actually shows that anybody can install these, including me that doesn't normally do this kind of work. So the key is, is just to snug them too tight because if you do that, you have a tendency of wanting to, uh, uh, to move them around. So just make sure that uh, you're level. Once you've got the first one in, you can actually uh, move it around a little bit. There we go. We're almost there. So you can play with them a little bit. It's in place. Perfect. Oh, good thing that fell through. All right. So we'll install the second one up here. One thing I'm going to show you is that once you screw this in, if you tighten that up too much, see what happens? You get a little bit of a twist on it. You get a little bit of a twist like that, then you're going to have problems because you're going to go off in the wrong direction, and then the clips aren't going to be able to go in. So you want to make sure that you're squared off. Now, we're squared off all the way through. We just put the screws in and just have them in there snug. You don't have to torque them too hard to be able to put them in. We got one screw per clip, and these are basically just coated teching screws that we're going to put in here. So there's the key. We got them. They're all straight. They haven't been twisted. You just made sure, whoops, missing one. We'll put it in. And we're all set to go to be able to start putting the siding in. All right, so let's put some siding in. Siding's already been uh, a pre-cut. But one thing too, I just want to show you if you use a long level and you put it in in between, that's a good way of being able to measure so that you're, uh, you're level all the way through. So you need to be level in this direction and again on the vertical. We were talking a while ago about uh, installing the, uh, the clips. I've installed one clip here that fits actually three pieces of siding. We don't recommend that you go any higher than about two clips if you're installing it first and then snap in your boards and keep going because if any one of these clips goes out of, out of line or you've torqued a little bit too much and it's extended, then what you're going to end up having is that you'll end up having a, an issue of, of misalignment at the top. But if you're a professional contractor and you're using laser alignment and chalk lines and all that kind of stuff, you can probably end up putting them all up. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer like me that hasn't done this very much, my wife has been putting up most of this, uh, this siding for me, uh, you end up wanting to not make any mistakes, so you're just going to put a couple up. So one of the key things, whether it's the uh, uh, summer or winter, one of the things that uh, you should think, take into consideration is that each one of these clips is a small little harpoon that's actually going into the end of this uh, uh, profiled uh, decking board here. And uh, you want to make sure that it, it ends up going through this little uh, uh, part of the, uh, of the track a lot easier. So to be able to do that, you just squeeze these little clips a little bit and use a pair of uh, square nose uh, lineman pliers and uh, just uh, squeeze them a little bit. They'll end up uh, coming back into track later on. They'll fit back in, they'll spring back into place. But if you do this this way, this really helps it uh, uh, go in. And especially if it's cold outside when you're installing these, uh, it makes it a lot easier. And especially with the siding I'm using here, that's a uh, uh, wormy butternut, so it's really light. It's almost like balsam wood, and it's more fragile than what we normally have for, uh, for siding. And uh, so uh, it's crucial to be able to do that. So here's my board, my siding board. The easy way to do it is that uh, you line it up. The clips already start to fit into the track a little bit. You push into the, uh, to the bottom, and you see, you heard it snap into place, go all the way across to the other side, make sure that you're in place, and then you can do the top section. There we go. Siding board's already installed, so it's no more difficult than that to be able to, uh, uh, to put them in place. And here, we're gonna do the next one up. I'm gonna do the same kind of, uh, of squeezing of the clips and actually what I'm going to end up doing is that uh, I will do two more boards here just to show you what uh, what it's all about again this one here is going up against the window frame you found its spot you see there 
it's into its place. Do the bottom section, just pushing it in, and then you're in place. No more difficult than that. We'll do one more, just because it makes me get ahead more in my job. And again, this will be the last clip on here. As you can see, I'm at the end of it. I'll put another clip from there and keep on going up. There we go. Last piece put into place. Find its sweet spot here when you feel it kind of clicked in. Do the bottom section and then there we go. That easy to install. So profiles there. Make sure that you're level to start off with in both horizontal and level and uh, cut the lengths. One of the things too that you want to make sure is that if you're coming up you only butt up against the joints like here we we're showing that we're buttoned up against each other there's nothing fancy. The other thing that it, in this particular case I got a strapping in behind so I have some uh, airspace to let your uh, level fall through like a while ago but it gives you a more of a rain screen effect so if you got any humidity or any water getting in it's going to flow down the backside. So here we go giving you a good uh, uh, rundown of how the uh, the decking is, uh, or the siding is actually installed. And uh, let me get back to the slideshow here. So if you are a um, good standing member of any of the architectural associations from in the Atlantic bubble, which is uh, Newfoundland, Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia, you can send me an email um, at thermalwoodcanada at, yahoo, at uh, yahoo.ca and I will send you a form to fill out uh, with a few questions. You send that back to me, then I'll make sure the association gets that, the association gets that so that you can uh, get your accreditation points. If you do have any other questions that you want, feel free to, uh, to reach out to me, uh, to call us up, and uh, it will be our pleasure to be able to help you out. Our next session will be in two weeks' time, and we'll go back into a, either another product or start talking about how some of the, uh, the wood can be laminated, so on and so forth. So thank you very much for listening to this session today.